and bullets to win the American West. It took strong men, too. Men like Kit Carson, buffalo hunter, Indian fighter, guide to the Western trails, who looked so well in fringe. And men like Wyatt Earp, who tamed Dodge City and lived to be 81 years of age in spite of the handicap of a name like Earp. Or Wild Bill Hickok, who was Marshal of Roaring Abilene and lived to tell of it until he fell victim to the occupational hazard of being shot in the back. Men like Meriwether T. Newberry, the magician of Montana, and Buffalo Bill Cody. It was Buffalo Bill who... You never heard of Meriwether T. Newberry? The gentle genius? The man who brought peace to Limerick, Montana? How many of us know of his exploits? Far too few. It's high time Newberry was given his rightful place in the glorious history of the West. This is his story. Limerick, Montana was almost exactly like every other frontier community, except Dismaler. It really might as well have been called Bullock, Montana. Bear Bullock owned practically everything, including the citizens who divided their lives between working for Bullock or moping or both. In less than two years, Bullock had taken over everything. That's Bullock. Once a pretty decent man, though bearish, of course, and bullheaded. But for the past two years, he had been ruling Limerick as though he were some kind of a king. He even had a real castle brought over from Europe to Montana, stone by stone. He had somebody to keep the peasants in line. A hired gunfighter named Killer Kissick did Bullock's enforcing. The mayor, Skaggle, had a sweet daughter named Betsy and another daughter named Gwenda. Whatever Gwenda was, it wasn't sweet. Skaggle couldn't do anything with Gwenda. Neither could King Bear the first. And there were people who thought maybe Gwenda could explain why Bullock had turned into a tyrant. People actually came to think of Bullock as a king who lived in royal luxury, his tyranny supported by the royal henchman, Killer Kissing. As long as Kissick was around, the people of Limerick might as well have been living in the 1490s instead of the 1890s. They began to think of themselves as peasant serfs under the heel of a royal despot. After all, against armed and mounted mercenaries, what have simple peasants ever been able to do? Finally, Mayor Skaggle did the only reasonable, courageous thing a mayor could do. He formed a committee for civic advancement. And the committee did the only reasonable, courageous thing a committee could do. It proposed a resolution that the whole town had to endorse, whether the whole town liked it or not. And so the committee decided our only solution is there. I mean over there.
It took a while for word to get around, but finally a real gunfighter rode into town. Meriwether T. Newberry? No. Six Finger Sykes. The excitement in Limerick was almost unbearable. Could this be the hour of liberation? Was this the man to set them free? He was certainly a tough-looking character. Six Finger Sykes. They said he'd kill for nothing, but he had held up the Committee for Civic Advancement for a $2,000 fee. Limerick expected its money's worth. Kissick was in the saloon, of course. Nobody had ever challenged Kissick before. Maybe he wasn't so fast after all. Folks were surprised at how long the main street of Limerick actually was when it came to a showdown. It took a while for the combatants just to get into range of one another. One thing about the Old West, people did a lot of good, healthy walking in the out of doors. Finally, the great moment came. It's too bad, but the fact was that even if Six Finger had had eight fingers like the rest of us, it wouldn't have been enough. <laughs> Well, another day, another gunfighter. Mary Weather T. Newberry? No. The Texas Kid this time. A real big-time hero. He was more expensive than Six Finger. High overhead. His dry-cleaning bill alone must have been astronomical. A very clean man. Kissick was in the saloon, of course. In his day, the Kid had pacified all kinds of desperadoes most of them a lot tougher than Killer Kissick. But then, the kid's day was some time ago. The main street of Limerick hadn't gotten any shorter. It was still about as long as the Oregon Trail. Maybe this was the moment. Even if it wasn't, showdowns like this were sure to replace moping as Limerick's principal diversion. As for Kissick, it was getting so showdowns were about all the exercise he ever got. It's too bad, but the fact is that cleanliness is next to useless in a gunfight. It was some time before another challenger showed up. Limerick was not optimistic. Nobody even knew this fellow's name. Kissick was in the saloon, of course. Kissick had been spending an awful lot of time in that saloon. Could it have slowed him up? This new fellow was certainly very dirty. Maybe this time, if he could get into range, It 
was too bad, but the fact was, nobody was very much surprised. The town had to pay for another funeral. <laughs> After that, no more gunmen came to town. The people of Limerick grew discouraged. They went back to working for Bullock, or moping, or both. But then one day, at an informal meeting of the Committee for Civic Advancement, a new inspiration was found. It seemed like a stroke of genius to send for Garrett Emerson Langry, Langry the Silver Tongue, the great evangelist. He brought peace and brotherly love to the savage Hottentot. He convinced the Amazonian cannibals to vary their diet. Could he work his magic here? Look, they're coming into town now. Garrett Emerson Langry certainly talked very well. Could his kind of oil calm the troubled waters of Limerick? Could fast words do what fast guns couldn't? Ah, uh, dear friend, my long journey to Limerick is already amply rewarded by the warmth of your welcome. Brothers, peace. It's the peace of the inner heart. This is what brings us together. Yes, good people of Limerick. We are bound, one and all, by man's deep-centered love for his fellow man. Think. Let us think now about that love, good people. Love, yes, love, dear friends. Man, the brother of man, carries the wonderful seed of universal love. Salvation is the answer. Nobody is beyond it, and as I look into your face, I can see a man who is on the brink of salvation. I can see somebody whose soul is crying out to be saved. Put out your hands to me, my friend, as I put mine out to you. Give me your hands in friendship. You have nothing to fear from me, as I know there is nothing to fear from you. You have goodness in you. I can see that as I can see you are ready to give up and put behind you your life of violence and evil. There is good in everybody, and I await your handing over to me the horrible instruments of your trade. Today, we welcome into our midst one who has gone astray, but now has come home. One who was lost in the wilderness, but has emerged in the light. Welcome, brother, welcome. Welcome.
It's too bad, but the fact is brotherly love is not bulletproof. With that, Limerick gave up. It became a kind of ghost town where people still live. No point in hoping. If the peasants were ever going to overthrow their tyrannical king and his henchmen, it could only be through some kind of miracle. Some legendary hero, a knight in shining armor on a white horse, was going to have to ride into Limerick and become the town's champion. Well, miracles rarely happen, of course, and in 1899, there were very few Lochinvars riding around the countryside. Limerick needed was a bold knight in shining armor. <laughs> what it got was Meriwether T. Newberry. Yes, at last. Meriwether T. Newberry. And that was enough. Gentlemen, the savior of Limerick and your new sheriff. What is it? It's my own invention. It's a robot. Huh? Is it alive? No, it's a machine. And probably the most complex machine ever designed. It runs on electrodynamic principles. How come it looks like you? There is a resemblance, isn't there? Well, now, mister, what's this all about? You came in answer to our advertisement. You know what was called for? The fastest gun alive. Huh? Well, CXA-107 is. CXA-107? Who? CXA-107. What's that mean? That means I had a lot of trouble the first 106 times. Well, well, now, mister, you got yourself a fine-looking dummy here, but... What's it got to do with facing up to a fast gun like Killer Kissy? But that's what I'm trying to explain, Your Honor. Now, you see, what I had in mind was a showdown between your Killer Kissy and CXA-107. You still do call it a showdown, don't you? Yeah, we still call it a showdown, but... Wait a minute. You mean this dummy is going to fight Killer Kissy? <laughs> <laughs>
propose a toast to Mr. Newberry and... What'd you say his name was? CXA 107. Right. Here's to CXA 100. Oh, I'll tell you what. We'll call him the Bang Bang Kid. Great hey! hey! son of house. <laughs> If I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't have believed it. Now we've got a bag to catch Bear Bull again. There remains a small detail of arranging a showdown, but with Kissick out of the way, Bear Bullock's empire will collapse like a house of cards. Hold on now. Let's say this here dummy machine does outdraw Kissick. Ain't you forgetting another small detail? I mean, those six-gun packing rats are his. They're not going to sign up for the boys' choir. They're going to be mad, shooting mad. All right. Now listen to me. You can't expect this machine to do all your work for you. You have to stand on your legs and pitch in, you yellow bellies. And stop blubbering your troubles in a schooner of beer. She's right. When the time comes, we'll take care of the rest of them. Well, actually, Bang Bang should be able to handle the whole job. Oh, my daughter Gwenda. How do you do? Well, we haven't talked in terms. What did you have in mind? Have in mind? Yes. I'm sure you had some sort of reasonable, decent figure in mind. Yes, it's a very decent figure. Well, how would $500 strike you? Sound fair, eh? $500? Well, actually, I... All right. All right, $1,000. All right. You're a shrewd businessman, Mr. Newberry. $2,000. $2,500? What do you say? I beg your pardon? $3,000. That's as much as we could scrape up. $3,000? Be reasonable, Mr. Newberry. But I don't want any money. I'm doing this as a scientific experiment. You mean you came all the way here just for a scientific experiment? That's right. Hmm. What's your angle, mister? Angle? There must be something you want. She's yours. That's fair enough. I said I'd do almost anything to get my chance at Bear Bullock. Well, of course, I realize we haven't had a very long courtship, but I'm sure that after Kissy's we get... Kissy's gone! <gasps> Kissy's gone! Hold it! What's going on around here? Oh, going, going on? Why, nothing, nothing at all. We're just having a friendly drink. You ain't fooling me. None of you. I heard shots in here. Shots? Shots? Did you hear shots? Or you? Anybody here hear any shots? You know how I feel about anybody carrying guns in this town. I got a message for you. Bullock says you're invited to a soiree tomorrow night. Soiree? Well, take him, my regret. Me? You might tell Bear Bullock that I think he's filth. Just tell him to go to the devil. What's that? Just one of those harmless Eastern dude drummers passing through. Wait a minute. <laughs> hmm. 
Look what we've got here, boys. A genuine gunfighter. All right, mister. You like to carry guns? Let's see how you use them. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. He's sick. Sick. Uh, you know what beer does to you. Must have leaky energy cells. Sorry. He's gonna be real sick in about one second. Stay out of this, runt. Wait. Don't shoot him. Do as I say and I'll come to supper tomorrow evening. That don't bother me. Yeah, but it bothers Bullock. Okay. Okay. As for you, stranger, sober up. And be on your way by morning or else. You hear what I said? Pay attention when I talk to you, stranger. He, uh, he doesn't hear very well when he's been drinking, but uh, I'll tell him when he sobers up. Make sure you do. Yeah. Ready, stranger. <laughs> Don't forget tomorrow night. Oh, I couldn't face the food. I might if I'm giving Bear Bullock on a platter. <laughs> Get him. Wait a minute. What are you going to do with him? <laughs> what do you think? Hang him. be out of town by tomorrow morning. He's not quite perfected yet. Are you ready? Now you just take it easy. This isn't gonna hurt one bit. Yeah. Huh? Now that wasn't so bad, was it, pal? Huh? Oh, don't look at me like that, bang, bang. You know, it's not as if I can give you an anesthetic. Don't tell me he feels pain, too. Well, no, no, but... Well, I like to think it deserves a certain amount of human consideration. Well, that's all well and good, Mr. Newberry. I came to tell you that um, Kissick and his men have been looking all over town this morning. And they were looking for your dummy. And if I was you, I'd go back to Chicago. Oh, I don't want to go to Chicago. I've been working on him. A few more hours should do it. Sure is complicated. I don't think it'll work. He's only a dummy. This works for a man, not him. But this is an extension of man, Miss Skaggle. Don't you see? We're turning the corner on a bright new world. And you know what it's going to be like? 
It's going to be a world of machines serving man. A world of science and brains, not brawn. And men like Killer Kissick won't count for anything. The world is still going to be full of Kissicks, and you need real men to put up a fight. These machines can't do it. I'm sorry. No, you're right. This Bullock, he's after you, isn't he? Mm. He wants me to marry him. But I won't have him. I'd much rather be married to a rat than to him. I'd just like a chance to give him his comeuppance. Ready, prisoner? Rise, prisoner, rise and face your punishment. All right, get up and march. Dead. Dead. You're almost dead. 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 Ah. Why do I get it? As I will. Mr. Bullock! Mr. Bullock, the main shaft's collapsed. What? Say that again. The main shaft collapsed? The main shaft collapsed. Whatever you say, sir. That's impossible. The main shaft couldn't collapse. We just shorted up a couple of months ago. Actually, it was about a year ago, Mr. Bullock. A lot of ore's been taken out of there since then. Oh. Well, what do you plan on doing about it, Leach? Well, I figure first thing tomorrow morning, we'd start digging it out. Figure we'd suspend work on the small shafts and everything else until we got the main one dug out. What are you trying to do to me, Leach? Put me in the poorhouse? There's only one thing to do. Start clearing that main shaft right now. But nobody's working today, Mr. Bullock. It's Sunday. I know it's Sunday. Well, it's for their own good, isn't it? No, we'll have another main shaft cave in, then it'll never get dug out. Leach, if that mine closes, the town closes. These people are depending on me. Kissick. I want every able-bodied man in Limerick rounded up and over the mine within an hour. Don't bring out the main shaft. There's going to be trouble. All right. All right, tell them I'm doubling their wages during this emergency. Forty cents a day. Today only. Forty cents? Why waste the money? There's your problem, Kissick. You don't use your head. All you think about is guns and killing. Now, I've told you a million times, killing ain't always the answer. Sometimes a good clot in the head does wonders, but not too hard. I want them in top digging condition. Kissick, what about that uh, other matter? She won't come. Well, we'll just see about that. All right, all right, get going. What are you waiting for? I'm not paying you 40 cents a day to sit around. Get back in line. All right, keep moving. What are you trying to do? Raise the quota? It's double pay. I could work all day long at these rates. You are. It's hot, though. You talker! You talk on your own time! <laughs> The shaft is clear. I'm going into town. You want to do a little tame? That's none of your business. Thank <laughs> you. 
help you. What happened to that window? It blew out in last week's windstorm. Nah. Where's your sister? Taking a bath. She don't want to see you. I know that. I know that from the door downstairs being double barred and that pail of water she threw on me. Where's the scrub tub? In there. But Gwenda's using it. I ought to tan your hide. Step aside, Betsy. I ain't a-stopping you. But there's one thing I hate is a smart-pants woman. <laughs> there you are. Oh, a flower. How thoughtful. Haven't you got any pride? There's a man watching you take a bath. I don't see it that way. What's that supposed to mean? You'll never be a man. You're a bull, bull bullock. Nobody can talk to me like that. Now, somebody gives the orders, somebody takes them. I give them. Yeah, by pointing a pair of guns at you ain't even a holder. I packed a gun along with the best of them. Got where I am with my own two hands. Of course, but since you got polished, you use Killer Kissick to do your fighting for you. You don't know too much about the world, do you? Oh, yes, I do. Kissick's the royal guard. Yeah, you might put it that way. Put it any way you want. Kissick is the royal guy that you chose. You're the king that nobody chose, and the rest are peasants. That's about it. Well, you're wrong. I'd never pick a king like you. Kings don't get picked. They do the picking. Ah, I see. Pick someone else, Bear Bullock. Picking who I want. And I say you're not. Get out and leave me be. I gotta finish my bath. Ain't going nowhere, not until you accept my invitation. All right. A hundred years from now, I'll still be sitting where I'm soaking. You decide. Well then, if that's what you want, Why, you're naked. What do you think I wear in the bathtub? Gwenda. Now, hold on now, Gwenda. That's it. Just take it easy. That's it. Now, hold on a minute. Get out of here. Get out of here this instant. Gwenda, you're not being very nice about it. All right, you're asking for it. <laughs> How could you do this to me? Slow down, Peter and Tom. I'll teach you how to treat a lady. You can't treat me like you treat those peasants. You get out of here, and I don't want you to ever come back, you hear? What are you a bunch of jackasses gaping at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm docking every one of you 40 cents. here, Gwenda. Are you, are you all right, Gwenda? Tell us the truth. Did he touch you? Nah. He's lucky. I should have killed him. Would have torn him limb from limb, him and every one of them. <sighs> yeah. I murder him. Listen. There's not a one of you would have lifted a finger, even if he tried to carry me off. You know what you're all like. Take a good look. You ought to be ashamed to call yourselves men. I say you're like a bunch of rabbits. I bet there's not a one of you fellas has enough guts to stand up for yourself. One of you will have to do it. Ain't nobody coming to help, so don't just stand there. 
One can save us. Isn't there one man who's courageous? Come on, we can make him our sheriff and we can all help him. Who will it be then, huh? One man! Wait a minute. Listen to me. Look, she's right. If you walk away now, you're walking away from the last chance you've got of setting yourselves free. Well, don't you see that nothing is worthwhile unless it's worth fighting for? Well, there wouldn't be any United States if Washington had surrendered. And you wouldn't be here now if you hadn't fought your way across the prairie. You can't give in. Fight. Fight for your homes, your dignity. Fight for your, your freedom. I thought it could be done with science and machines. I was wrong. It takes courage. It takes a man. <laughs> Sure is a noble thing you're doing here. We ain't likely to forget you in the cemetery if things go bad. Now, you know what to do. The minute Kissick and his men come into the saloon, you exercise your legal appointed authority to arrest every last one of them for murder, thieving, coercion, uh, disturbing the peace, uh, you know. Where's everybody going? <laughs> Don't want to distract you during the delicate arrest period. Good luck. Bang, bang. We failed each other. Sheriff? <laughs> now, what did you want to go and get brave for, drummer? Don't you know what happens to sheriffs around here? You're all under arrest? All right, Mr. Lawman. Joke's over. I said you're all under arrest? Sure are a plucky little corpse, drummer. How do you want it? Do I have to have it? Slow. All six bullets, or one fast one. That's the only choice you got, drummer. I'd see to it that you got a fair trial. <laughs> I-I thought... I told you to leave town. I'll take the drummer. You get him. I get Bear Bullock as a wedding present. Okay, let's go get him. Let's look at these production reports, Leach. It's reached the point where you can't get an honest day's work anymore. Yes, sir. What if we cut out the lunch hour? But the lunch hour is only ten minutes, sir. Oh, oh. Mr. Bullock, 
What? I just came from town. They're on their way here to string us up. You been drinking? Just six men. Every last one of them shot down. And there's a new sheriff. They call him the Bang Bang Kid. What about Kissick? They got him in jail. We better get out of here. Come back here, you yellow billy. Ah. Just a doubt you can't count on it. You're fired! How about the grub? It's coming. Anyway, where you're gone, you won't need grub. You and Bear Bullock. <laughs> they ain't gonna get Bullock inside that castle. He can hold them off for ten years. <laughs> inside there for 10 years. He's got an army of sharpshooters up there. Where'd they all come from? Maybe he's too much for us. Wait a minute. Where's the mine? The mine? Why, it's off on the other side of the crossroad, about a half a mile from here. All right. I'll need a man to go with me. It's up 
to me. What's the matter? Why don't you just open the door and shove it in? Oh, no. That's just what you'd like. I hate it. So that you could try and get out of here. All I want's my grub. You're the one who's got the gun. Besides, I got my constitutional rights just like any other prisoner, and it's against the law not to feed me. OK. But one bad move, Kissick, and I'll pump you full of holes. First off, lie down on your belly. Dynamite? I'm getting out of here. Try and leave it. I'll blast you. Get aboard a flight. Aboard? What do you want with a board? We'd better hurry. Don't ask questions and get going. Come on. What do you need a board for? To make a cannon.
was only him shooting at us. That's pretty smart of him. Only Bear Bullock would have planned something so low down. Well, if he's hiding in this hole, let's drag him out. Jay. Never mind that. Get your hands up. Reach for it, mister. I'll fire. Quit your pack and I'll blast you. This is all I had when I started out. Ain't going nowhere without it. <laughs> your peasant hat sits mighty small on you, King Bear Bullock. <laughs> I've been waiting four years for this, but it's been worth every minute. Why don't you stop beating your gums, lady? If you're gonna shoot, shoot. Shoot? Ah, uh, no. I'm becoming vicious. I want to watch you march to prison with your old polecat, Kissick. Move! You better get him to bed. You look sick. Just a minute. No matter what this man has done, he deserves a fair trial. Well, you're all acting like a bunch of vengeful animals. You don't deserve to be called Americans. He's right. What we're doing here is something we all ought to be ashamed of. We'll put Bullock in jail. And then later on tonight, when we're more calm and rational about this whole thing, we'll hold a trial. A fair and impartial trial. The kind of trial the Founding Fathers would have been proud of. The kind of trial that was meant when they wrote down the Constitution of these here United States. And then we'll hang him. Well, Mr. Bear Bullock, how do you like this? Go ahead, get a good look, because you can't have me. You can look until your tongue drops out. Won't do you a bit of good. <laughs> you marry me. Don't mind if I laugh, do you? If you have the brains of a ninny, you'd know how to treat a woman, which is with respect, and which means she ain't gonna stand to be told morning, noon, and night that you picked her about the same way you cut a horse out of a herd. Ha! Huh.
That's what comes of being nice to her. Should have tamed her like she deserved. Woman! Woman! My lord, my lord. I'm empty of drink, woman. Yes, my lord. Where's my supper? Cooking, my lord, cooking. That late. What do you do with your time, woman? Your indulgence, my lord, spring cleaning. Still? Been a week now. But, my lord, 36 bedrooms alone. You fail to properly budget your time, woman. Now, about my accounts. Up to the moment, my lord, mine number one, three ton increase last month. Mine number two, one and a half ton increase, my lord. Let's pull three figures. What has happened to my production? I was unable to dig my usual quarter last month, sire. Remember, last month I had to paint the castle. Less than useless. Less than useless. You're a saddlebag full of, full of excuses. Yes, my lord. Shall I soothe you with a song? Well, it better be good. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Jake, are you there? I'm coming in, Jake. What's going on, Jake? They don't make plates like they used to. Tell me, how's His Majesty? Quiet, peaceful. Must be rehearsing. Listen, Jake. I've been thinking about you. You shouldn't be working while everybody's having fun over at the saloon. Hmm? Because you're free to join him. Run along. I'll watch after the prisoner. Well, I don't know. Are you sure you don't mind? Don't miss the dance. Okay. <laughs> well, look at the high and mighty bear bullock. Sulking here behind bars and waiting to get hung. But after all, I always told you you'd end up this way. <laughs> well, learned your lesson, I reckon. I, a stubborn woman. You'd rather be stubborn than admit the truth. What's that? That you love me. Heaven forbid. What ever gave you that idea of me? Because of the way you hate me. That just doesn't follow. The only reason why I hate you is that I love you. Nothing more. That's a plenty. Well, I don't believe that. What does a man have to do? Didn't I have that castle shipped over here all the way from Europe and put together just for you? Those, those carriages, and those servants in the fancy pants just for you? What more can I do? I'll tell you. You could at least have said it properly. You could have gone down on your knees and asked me. Wait a minute. You mean you built that castle? and then brought in Kissick and his men and put Limerick under your thumb out of spite? All because of Gwenda? Well, that doesn't justify it. And you let him keep the town under his thumb out of the same spite? What business is this of yours? Who is this dude? I'm engaged to marry him. What? Tomorrow. Oh, no, you're not. What you doing? Letting him out. What for? So he can run away with you. <laughs> I'm not going as far as I can fly with him. Tell her you love her. Huh? Tell her you love her. I love you. Kiss her. Look, you'll have to get married someplace else. I'm not gonna perform the ceremony. Will you get out of here? Hey, wait a minute. We, uh, won't need this anymore. There 
goes Bullock. Yeah, Gwenda, too. It is Bullock. And Gwenda Skaggle. We were the time. Let's run after her. Hold it. She helped him. Will you wait a minute? Is it true? That she ran off with him? Yes, and I helped them. Oh, no, 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 Forget the rope. Somebody bring me a gun, a club, a fork, anything. Your Honor, if you'll just let me explain. Uh, explain? You help her run off with the worst skunk that ever set foot on the face of this earth, and you want to explain? Oh, how sharper than a serpent's teeth is an ungrateful child. What's that? Bullock gave it to me. Bullock gave... Bullock, that... Dirty, low, down, rotten. We've had that boy all wrong. It's all here. The deed of the castle, the copper mine, everything he owned. And he's left it all to the citizens of Limerick. <laughs> I'll take these. You? A good bad man will win every time. <laughs> he doesn't work too good without guns, does he, drummer? He can't get us all. There's only one of him. Well, if you let him get away with this, you'll be right back where you started from. Look around, please. Forget what I just said. That's better. All right. Tomorrow morning, we start a new schedule at the mine. Double hours and no pay. Oh, yeah. One other thing. Expect a good turnout tomorrow morning. Anybody who don't show up for work gets fired. I mean, real fired. Right back where we started. No, we're not. We're not finished yet. Give me a hand with Bang Bang. I'll go for the doctor. Oh, he doesn't understand. Oh.
Betsy, I'm finished. If only I knew what went wrong. You better hurry, Mr. Newberry. Mr. Newberry, you haven't much time. Don't worry, Betsy. I'll fix it. All right. Hurry up. Come on, let's get going. Keep it up. Keep, keep it up. up. Keep moving. Come on. Move it along. to pieces. Get him. Not me. I seen that thing shoot. Yellow bellies. No, sir. Let's get out of here. I ain't fighting no machine. Come on, boys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> In the hands of a woman, even a broken machine sometimes can do better than an ordinary man. So Limerick came into the 20th century without Bullock without any tyrants at all, but with Mary Weather T. Newberry, a whole lot of signs had to be repainted. Newberry saw to it that Limerick had all the most modern conveniences, and people were only occasionally inconvenienced by them. He even equipped the place for traffic in case there should ever be any. There was even a sanitation department once Kissick recovered from his wound and his astonishment. Limerick's peace was maintained by Son of Bang Bang. Newberry himself kept very busy being Limerick's first citizen, seeing to the orderly advance of science, and with his wife, the former Miss Betsy Skaggle, living happily ever after. Sure, it'll be all right. Of course. Now, don't worry. Everybody down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 